Money Vikings Collectibles, welcome back. I want to talk today about Magic the Gathering and the Hedonic Treadmill. Hmm, probably wondering what the heck is this guy talking about? Yeah, let's talk about a couple concepts here. So this is where finance and investing and collecting and uh, card games like Magic and Flesh and Blood and Sorcery and others come together. There's a concept in psychology and money called the hedonic treadmill. So it comes from the word hedonism. Hedonism being the, you know, uh, gluttonous, uh, more and more and more never satiated appetite of consumption, right? And there's this concept that as we reach new plateaus of luxury or um, uh, of our having our needs met and then uh, having things come to us in terms of abundance, um, basically over time, what we used to have we reset our baseline basically. So classic, classic example is, um, you know, if you have the, uh, the steak dinner at the fine restaurant every, every night with the glass of wine, uh, or the, the, the lobster dinner with the glass of wine and the, the fine dining every single night, um, basically it gets old, right? And it becomes normal. So it's not special anymore. So one of the tricks that a lot of people use psychologically when um, building wealth and investing and living their life is to actually purposely try to lower a little bit of their consumption and their quote unquote standard of living because it makes the special occasions, the special things even more special in our minds. So again, we get very used to a certain level at some point and you know it 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 feels it becomes normal it's you hear this a lot sometimes people that uh, you know they might live uh, by the ocean or have like an ocean view or something and you might think in your mind that uh, oh i'd never get tired of that i i would you know sit there in awe every day and some people would say um i don't know you you buy that house with the ocean view and after a while you just sort of take it for granted and it just seems to be a human thing. So it's, it's, it's a concept that I think needs to be discussed and mastered as you live a life of true wealth because you really have to be careful about what has become your new standard of living. So um, it's a classic reason why in like, for example, the Millionaire Next Door books that people don't build wealth because there's always that keeping up with the Joneses. It's never enough. There, you know, people will say, when I make this much money, I'll be happy or I'll do this or that. And they, they make that money. There's a little bit of inflation and uh, their lifestyle just creeps right up to that level, right? And beyond typically for most people. So basically that's essentially the concept of the hedonic treadmill. So we, we, we get on this treadmill of hedonism where nothing, nothing is satiated, nothing is enough. It's why you wonder like sometimes you see these billionaires and they're going for more and more. And some, you know, us normal folks kind of look at them and you're like, geez, I mean, when is enough enough? And sometimes it just isn't. There's never a point where people are satisfied. Um, I can see the good and the bad of that. We always want to push the envelope, do new things, etc. But at the same time, for our own contentment and happiness, we need to probably take stock in our mind of our quality of life. There's a lot of luxuries that you probably have that you just aren't thinking of as luxuries anymore. You know, if you think about it, if you eat out at a restaurant, that's an amazing situation. You're sitting there and there's like staff and people everywhere like serving you and they're like, they're cooking your food and they've prepared the environment and they prepared the menu and they went and they got the food and they bought, you know, um, they're serving you, they're bringing you everything you need, you know, and I, I get it, you're paying for it, you're paying money uh, for that and you're paying more for it. Um, but it's actually kind of, a luxury when you think about it. So back to magic. Um, magic, I think, suffers right now from the hedonic treadmill. So the hedonism, and that's why I have this picture here of 30 years of magic, magic products. So as you can see, around 2018, 2019, and then especially 2020, the amount of product just like, you know, shoots up. You know, you have 26 different sets a year, um, then you're going to 46 in 2022, you're at 48 plus it's too much guys. And we've talked about this before, but I think that's why people are just getting so down on it right now. It's like too much to process. It doesn't seem special anymore. Um, I will juxtapose that with flesh and blood. Okay. So flesh and blood, I think has hit the sweet spot on the hedonic treadmill, right? So their, their, their pace of release 
is I think really, really nice because you get to know a set, you get to open a few boxes, the cards hold value or seem to be holding value. You know, this, uh, you know, the original Welcome to Wraith Alpha box, like it's really a special thing. It's a very valuable collectible. Um, I understand the early magic stuff is still collectible and there's still a lot of collectible opportunities in magic, but recently they're just overdoing it on what I call, you know, what I'm putting together here to and putting two and two together is this hedonic treadmill. Um, and it's like printing like crazy. So nothing about the product seems special anymore. I'm totally skipping the last couple of them because they just don't seem special. And it just seems like it has to go bigger and more and glossier and shinier and this and that. It's kind of like sometimes those like Chrome products, like they do like, um, I think Garbage Pail Kids did this where there's like Garbage Pail Chrome or something. And it's almost like there's too much glossiness. Like every card then is just a, a foil or a glossy and you kind of just get tired of it, you know? So again, sometimes it's okay to ramp back, keep something simple and basic, and then when the special stuff comes, it's even more special, you know? It's just sort of a life lesson that I think we learn. So Flesh and Blood, I think they're nailing it with this. I think they're really finding the sweet spot there. Magic is totally going overboard, totally needs to ramp it back. This 48 plus products a year, this is way too much to digest. Yeah, I understand what the CEO says. He says you can buy what you want, you don't buy. Yeah, I get it. You know, we're all going to like buy what we want and not buy what we want. But uh, at the same time, I don't know. It just seems to be diluting the brand and, and diluting the collectability, even the playability. It's hard. You're continually, you know, you don't get time. I don't feel we, we have time to get to know the decks, to get to enjoy the product with your friends. That was a lot of it. I get it. They're squeezing every dollar out of us. So, but I don't know. I think it's starting to backfire. I really do. Now, on the other, on the other extreme, sorcery uh, contested realms. I'm excited at the boxes, but I think that's going to be too slow, to be honest. Um, I'm starting to get a little bit uh, thinking that's going to be not enough product. Um, we'll see. Uh, I'm excited about the concept. Um, maybe it fits with the culture and the ethos of this original art. You know, original piece of art can take years to make. But um, I don't know, for gameplay, collectability, we'll see how that goes. Flesh and Blood, I think they're totally hitting out of the park in terms of uh, uh, the uh, amount of sets and, and how they're releasing things. So that is, uh, that's pretty cool. Looking forward to, um, to uh, Dusk Till Dawn uh, and all that. So, hey, thanks a lot for watching and we will see you all soon. Please like and subscribe, all that great stuff. Appreciate it as we grow the channel. Take care.